Welcome to God of Run. This is Will Sanchez. This is a very special episode of God of Run. This is my 101st episode to open up my sixth year in Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Tonight, we're going to learn all about the Children of the Fallen Patriot Foundation. I'm thrilled to have as the guest host of tonight's episode, a co-founder of the Run Anyway Foundation, Lance Swenson. So Will, thank you so much for entrusting me with uh, your 100th and first show. So I'm very excited. And uh, with me today, I have Cynthia Kim and Colleen O'Hare. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about running. We're talking about uh, the military and a race that we have coming up. So very, very excited. Um, I met Will in 2012 when we did the Run Anyway Marathon in Central Park after the New York City Marathon got canceled. And uh, Will and I have been uh, great friends ever since. I've been uh, on the show once before with uh, the co-founder of the Run Anyway Foundation, uh, Todd Kelly. So um, it's been great. And uh, so now I'd like to introduce officially the, the guest that we have here. Uh, Cynthia Kim is the co-founder of an organization called Children of Fallen Patriots. Why don't you tell a little bit about that organization? Okay, yes. Um, my husband and I founded Children of Fallen Patriots after an experience he had in Panama. Uh, in 1989, his um, unit was sent down to take out the dictator Manuel Noriega. And it was um, right before Christmas, and the first night of fighting, uh, a, a sergeant in his unit, Sergeant Delaney Gibbs, was killed. He never met Sergeant Gibbs, but was struck by the tragedy of his death uh, you know, five days before Christmas. and. He had a young wife who was pregnant. He left behind. So years later, it was you know troubling him, and he wanted to do something to help children like her, and came up with the idea of Children of Fallen Patriots. And our mission is to help um, provide college, college scholarships and educational counseling to military children who have lost a parent in the line of duty. Mm. Mm -hmm. And how you and I met. Um, I was running a 50 mile ultra marathon and I wanted to run for an organization. Mm -hmm. So one of our mutual friends said, hey, have you ever heard of Children of Fallen Patriots? And I hadn't, but as soon as they told me what you guys do, I like fell head over heels for you guys and mm -hmm. called David Kim up and said, hey, I'm running this ultra marathon. Can I raise money for you guys? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been praying about this and I, I think it'd be such a great opportunity um, for you to run for us. So um, one of the cool, uh, or I guess the unique things about Fallen Patriots mm -hmm. is is how you guys are structured. Um, yes. A lot of different charities uh, will give, you know, 90%, 50% of everything you earn to the actual people, but you guys are a little bit different. What do you guys do? Right, we are able to give 100% of all third-party donations to the children. Uh, our board very generously covers all of our overhead costs so that we can do that. Um, it's, we've been able to do it since we started in 2002, and we hope to continue that. Um, forever. Uh, it, it really does make you um, operate very differently, very efficiently, uh, very effectively it, it, as an organization um, and in the way we give out the money. So we're very careful. We get um, you know, great documentation and uh, just <laughs> confirm that the money is going where we, where we assume it is and to have the kids that we help also participate in, in just keeping it really you know, clean. Uh, yeah. Make sure this need is, is legit. Money is just carefully handed out and spent because we have this 100%, which is very rare and really hard to do. Very rare. But we're we're committed to it. And from the in the on the inside, we say, does you know, does this need to happen? Should we save that money? Because although it's all covered, any money saved on overhead would go to the children. Hmm. So when you say it goes to the children, it pays for their college education. Yes. And does it pay for books and stuff like that as well? Yes living expenses. Uh, they all have different needs because um, they get money from the government. We have other um, groups that we can help them find uh, res you know, other resources. So we might have a, a uh, it's more rare, but a child who doesn't really have any needs that everything's covered because of all the grants that are out there and uh, we'll buy them a laptop. You know, we, oh. we try to find some way to help. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And um, with us is Colleen O'Hare. And Colleen, you have three children. Mm -hmm. um, one right now is in college, one is about to go to college, and one is uh, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. But um, they are all going, either are benefiting from Children of Fall Patriots or going to be benefiting from Children of Fall Patriots. Um, because unfortunately, your husband, Ray O'Hare, um, was killed in a training accident back in what year? 2000. 
2000. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about that, about Ray and um, what it was like uh, being left behind and having the three kids raising up and then what it felt like having, getting a call from someone at Children of Fallen Patriots? Well, I, uh, he was in uh, halfway through test pilot school in Patuxent River, Maryland. Um, seemed like a fairy tale kind of life that we are living and um, the training accident happened and uh, I got that what you see in movies where the people come to the door and dressed in uniform and trying they told me that he had been in a plane crash and mm. and that was tough to hear I, I don't I they had to repeat it a few times to me because I just didn't hear it <laughs> I didn't want to hear it mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you know when we when we had our third child uh, I remember Ray saying you know our, our parenting has just gone from man to man to zone defense mm -hmm. and uh, then you know when he died I was like gosh what kind of game do you call that where it's it's mm -hmm. three on one so I just knew that I needed to keep going and get up every day because my kids needed me and and um, they were four three and ten months old at the time and only the oldest really kind of knew what uh, was going on. Um, and so I had uh, one Christmas visiting my brother. I was looking online, trying to figure out what kind of scholarships I should be looking for for Katie, because uh, she's my first, who's now a freshman. And, uh, and I came upon the Fallen Patriots website, and I read it, and I thought, this is unbelievable this 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 has to be too good to be true and uh, I was wrong it was it's it's very real and so I enrolled all of the children um, at the time so even though my youngest yeah. isn't in college yet all children are registered um, so that the foundation can keep track of the kids and so you found them through just searching online just searching online <laughs> That's pretty amazing to hear because, Cynthia, yeah. one of the things you and I were talking about is that it's not exactly easy to find all the children that could benefit from Children of Fallen Patriots. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because there are privacy acts and, um, and reasons why they should be protected because, um, you know, people could scam them. And so it's difficult to find them and it's difficult to, um, for families like Colleen's when their kids are little, it's hard to convince them to, you know, go ahead and enroll with us because college just seems like such a far, yeah. it's so far away. Um, but we do, we do try to keep track of them because they move around a bit and uh, we don't want to lose track of them. And we want to plan for, for their future needs. Hmm. And raise the money as soon as possible to plan to give to them. Uh, I guess it was a year and a half ago, I sat down with uh, John Coogan, who's the director of Children of Fallen Patriots. Yes. And I said, hey, I have this idea. Um, why don't we do uh, this big fundraiser for Children of Fallen Patriots and we'll do it uh, in uh, a relay style where we run from the Concord, Massachusetts, because that's where your guys' uh, emblem is, yes, right? The statue, logo, the which is uh, right on your, your yep. arm there. There he yep. is. So there's a Patriot statue in Concord, Massachusetts, and then there's the Arlington National Cemetery where Ray is buried mm -hmm. um, down in D.C. And we decided we were going to run from Concord, Massachusetts all the way down to Washington, D.C. And um, when uh, I first presented the idea, he's like, can you run that far? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I can't. Yes, you can. But what I can do is I, we can get a lot of people to run that far. Mm -hmm. um, so we did it relay style. And we left from Concord, Massachusetts. And we ran um, through Connecticut, where uh, you ran an overnight leg, yes. right? Uh, you and your whole family ran mm -hmm. overnight leg. And then we ran through Greenwich, Connecticut, where you and I are both residents. Yes. Um, and we had a whole bunch of people join us from our church and from our community run down. Yeah. And then we ran through Central Park and through Baltimore, uh, through Philly, and then we ended up in Washington, D.C. And then that's where you and I met. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were standing there on that hillside and we were waiting for one of the, the second to last leg runner to come in. And he was one of the uh, children. Children, one of, the, great, one of the students that we've helped. One yeah, of the he students was actually a graduate. A graduate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. he was running to us, and as we were standing there talking to the crowd, saying, "Hey, has anyone else been a beneficiary of Fallen Patriots?" And then you very meekly raised your hand and <laughs> said, "Yes, in fact, uh, I, you know, my husband was killed." And you, you shared the story with us, and we got to run with uh, this flag. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I remember you ran with it for a little while. Not very long. <laughs> <laughs> it started getting heavy quick. Yeah, and then um, you gave me the honor of passing it off to me, and I carried it for a long time, and then Todd carried it also for a long time. Um, but that was quite an experience. Um, that's one of the, well, it's definitely my favorite thing that Run Anyway has ever done, uh, running through D.C., um, passing all the monuments. We ran by all the monuments except for the Vietnam Wall which we walked by out of respect. Yeah. And then we stopped and reflected at the Lincoln Memorial because we walked around the back. And then from right there, we could see uh, Arlington National Cemetery, which was pretty wild. Um, so that was a very yeah. cool experience. Um, but so you said, uh, we did the 500 for the Fallen last year. And then you said that that was the last time you ran, right? <laughs> uh, so it's been about seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. And then now when I called you up and said, hey, we're going to do the 500 for the Fallen again, um, how about you run again? You decide I'm going to do that, and then not only that, uh, you're going to do a whole half marathon. Is that correct? Yes. And when and when and where is that? That's next month in New York City, uh, uh, and it's 10,000 women. Um, I tried to get in, but they wouldn't <laughs> let me. <laughs> And uh, my daughter and I, Katie, who's one of the recipients, is gonna, are going to run it together. And I'm looking forward to it, besides the pain factor, <laughs> since I haven't run much. But yeah. to share that with her, because obviously, freshman in college, I don't get to see her as much as I did. And, and, uh, and so we're going to do that together. She's never run more than four miles, so she's going to have an experience. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the things that you guys have around your necks, the, the dog mm-hmm. tags. Yeah. So, Cynthia, you were talking about uh, Sergeant Gibbs' story. Um, yes. He was the man who was killed in action, and then that inspired your husband, David, to start Children of Fallen Patriots. So yeah. what we did was we put Sergeant Gibbs' names on those dog tags, and all 150 runners that ran with us last year got dog tags. Um, and now this year, um, we're going to put somebody else's name on those dog tags. And could you talk a little bit about that man and why? This year it's going to be um, Johnny Mack. And Johnny Mack was a colonel in the Army, and he was killed in Afghanistan. And uh, his, um, his children are beneficiaries of Children Fallen Patriots. Um, he, uh, Johnny Mack actually went to West Point with my husband. He was a couple years older, so my husband actually knew him. And he was the first person we knew that had been killed in, mm-hmm. in these um, wars. Uh, his, uh, he has five children, so we hope to touch each one of their lives. Um, his one daughter graduated with our assistance, and she's gone on to be a live out her dream, which is to be a sports writer for her mm-hmm. alma mater, Cal- um, Kansas State University. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnny Mack's uh, family has been you know, just an inspiration to us, and um, we thought that, that it would be nice to honor him this year to have each of the runners at each leg pass his name down. Yeah, and along with the dog tags, we also run with uh, an American flag, yes. um, which is very cool because um, every single person, I would imagine you guys included, when you get to carry that American flag, all of a sudden, it just means a, a little bit more. Because we, we joke around all the time, if we're running through the streets of New England or New York, and all of a sudden you just run across the street, you're a jerk. <laughs> because you're stopping cars and people are honking you. Yeah. But as soon as you put an American <laughs> flag in your hands, you're a patriot. Yeah. So our goal is that each year we run this, because we'd like to keep it going, is we're going to put a different uh, fallen hero, fallen patriot on our dog tags. But Colleen, you have a picture of Ray with you. That's, uh, he's in front of his, uh, he was a backseater of uh, F-14 jets that made a uh, Top Gun movie. So, oh, really? You know, exciting. Cool. Yep. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be running uh, the 500 for the Fallen again uh, this Memorial Day weekend. Um, but this won't be either of your guys' first long-distance event. Um, mm-hmm. Cynthia, you've run the New York City Marathon twice. Yes. Well, the first time I ran it, I was single, and I ran it all by myself. <laughs> and uh, it was interesting because, you know, I just had this feeling that, you know, failure is not an option here. <laughs> and uh, I came across the finish line. I had fallen twice, and I had my feet were bleeding from blisters and my husband who was um he said i've never seen you know something so gruesome and he was in ranger <laughs> school um so i you know that was not the best experience but then years later my husband and i ran it together and we finished together and that was a wonderful experience and colleen you've run the boston marathon mm-hmm. not once <laughs> not twice but how many times five five times <laughs> and uh that's impressive you, a few of them were, how, how long ago, a couple years ago? <laughs> My point is, you ran the Boston. a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah, but you ran the Boston Marathon before it was even cool. 
You did. You said there was only how many runners when you ran? Six thousand. Six thousand. And actually, I have an aerial Ooh. photo of the race from 1990, I think, and it shows the town square in Hopkinton, and then you can see the Prudential Center in the in the far distance. So it gives you a sense of how far 26.2 yeah. miles is. Yeah. Luckily, I got wow. the picture after the race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 pretty amazing to see. But I grew up in a town next to Hopkinton, so it was. Um, Patriots Day was was a special day. Didn't even know other states yeah. didn't have such a thing, and and so I grew up with the race and my brother running it. And then in college, I ran it a few times as a bandit. So when there was only six thousand versus the cutoff of thirty five thousand this past year, now. I distinctly remember running near um, a guy by the name of Johnny Kelly, and he is just an iconic runner and, 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 and personality in Boston and he ran until late in his life um, and you could tell, I could tell I was near him because of all the people screaming Johnny, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny in the crowds um, and that was, that was kind of exciting to be anywhere near there. Uh, every once in a while there was a go Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the neat things about the Boston Marathon is it's millions of people out there cheering for you and that really helps when you're got you know uh, you're hurting <laughs> and and um, and I ran the Boston Marathon last year uh, particularly because of wanting to stand in solidarity with mm. all the other people who are running it as well as watching it yes it was different and the crowd was that much more passionate as if instead of onlookers, it was as if they were part of it too. And uh, signs that said, remember why you're out here, mm. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And um, and uh, uh, the last turn you take in, in, until the long straightaway yeah. <laughs> um, where the bombings had, um, had happened the year before, um, I just remember going up near a guy who you know I hadn't been running with but I just looked at him and I was like we are so almost there <laughs> and he just he said I know and he had tears coming down and it was mm. such an emotional experience just you're tired and you're, you want that finish line but you also knew you were reminded as you're going down what had happened the year before and um, it made it particularly memorable for me and mm. but probably my last but Last I should not full full because you're definitely doing the half marathon <laughs> yeah. next month. Yes, yes. Yeah, Cynthia, yeah. where what do you see Fallen Patriots' future as? Mm -hmm. um, is it going after every finding every student, every possible? Yeah, our research shows that there's close to twenty thousand kids who've been affected right. by a loss in you know in the line of duty. We've identified almost six thousand of those kids, so um, you know we got to raise money for all of them, and um, we hope to eventually find all of them. Um, we have great partnerships with the VA and to help us find more of the kids. Um, another thing we've done that's really cool is we've hired a lot of the kids that have graduated with our assistance and um, two of the widows that, um, two widows just like Colleen who come and work for us so they do a better job of talking with the kids and counseling mm -hmm. them because they've been through what they've been, you know, what they're going through. Yeah. Uh, so we just hope to keep growing that type of thing but also at the same time stay lean and mean because we want to keep the 100% um, of your donations going to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Cynthia, how would somebody watching right now, if they want to get involved with Children of Fallen Patriots, if yeah. they want to give or get involved in some way, what are a couple ways that they would be able to do that? Well, if you know anybody who, uh, children like Colleen's, who would need our help, help us find them, that would be great. Of course, giving is, is wonderful, and we are on fallenpatriots.org. Uh, but what, what we try to do is, you know, we try to point out that, you know, look, 1% uh, of our community, our population serves. Mm. And this is a way that we all can serve. And like you, there's different ways that, you know, what are you good at and it, can you wrap that into a way to give to Fallen Patriots? Um, we have kids that are at the elementary school age that are, you know, having fundraisers for us. Um, oh. A school in New Canaan is doing a, set up an obstacle course and all 600 of those kids are going to go through that obstacle course and they're all raising money to give to Fallen Patriots and 100% of that will go to the, to the students. I'm um, just, you know, stores have give and restaurants give a percentage of their um, 
revenue for a weekend or you know, there's just very creative and different ways to do it and we love to wrap it into who you are and what you do and this is how you're serving mm. um, because you know we all can do something and um, these families have given so much and it's the very least we could do yeah yeah. And one of the other ways that they could get involved is to participate in the 500, 500 for the <laughs> Fallen. Yes. Yeah. Again, it's Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and Colleen, you may, you, you're going to be at the end for sure, mm -hmm. but you were saying you may actually do another leg. Yes, the first one I was thinking about doing. Um, Which last year, Todd and I ran completely alone. Really? So we would <laughs> love to have company, yeah. Well, I thought uh, it might be symbolic for us to um, get my family together who all still live up there. Um, the We had run um, hood to coast. Uh, my husband had been training with us in uh, 2000 and um, the crash happened a month before the race and we decided, mm. or and I decided to keep running uh, which was a very emotionally healthy thing to do for me to work some of the emotions out and um, so uh, brothers and um, their wives and all had a team running 195 miles and uh, so I'd like to be able to recreate that in some way all of us on that first leg to be able to run together in solidarity and and um, uh, and then the last one again and uh, all three of my children will be running in that too and uh, they had heard already from me how much fun it was for me and to meet folks and I had actually met people from Children Fall Fallen Patriots and then I, I actually knew that there's actual people right. <laughs> because it had been on the phone and internet and, yeah. and just seeing the heart of the people who who were sponsoring it. I just, I, I went home and I had told my kids, mm. you know, this mm. is real and they care and even, you know, because every day of their lives they don't have a dad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and somebody still cares there's a lot mm -hmm. of somebody's yeah. that still care so I'd like for them to to run that and yeah. uh, and and feel what that's like um, I love the pictures that we have from last year because um, because I had run Boston last year and then this was a month later and I signed up the night before <laughs> right. like, um, because I was like there's, did that. <laughs> well because I, I figured I was too tired you know mm -hmm. still recuperating recuperating but um, I was like why not I need to mm. and um, so um, it was just neat to be able to actually go out and, and meet all the people in yeah. my leg and and uh, see the monuments um, I loved the walking by the <laughs> 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 memorial but um, so I tended to be more toward the back um, but uh, on the last hill coming up to the um, Marine, Marine Corps Memorial, you guys were like, okay, Colleen, you know, gave me the flag and put me in front. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it's about. And, yeah. Um, we put together a book afterwards and uh, reading some of those stories that some of the most impactful moments are is, is when we handed you the flag and you led us up to that final memorial because you represent, you know, what we're actually running for, mm -hmm. you know. And I had no idea when I signed up the night before, you know, I just, this, this is something I need to do. No idea, you know, where my life would go afterwards, all the positive things that have come out yeah. afterwards and the, and the neat people that I've met. Um, the running community is a very tight-knit, close community. And it's, it is. it's cool that you get to, like you said, you get to work things out through running and yes. through talking. And, Thank goodness. Yeah. Yep, and hopefully I serve as a role model to my kids that, you know, you not only survive, but thrive. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think, Cynthia, yes. you've seen that many times with uh, surviving moms or the su surviving children, how they yeah. can actually be role models to other people. Absolutely, they can be an inspiration, and that's, you know, we try to connect them to other kids that have had similar experiences. Mm -hmm. um, recently, very sadly, um, one of the women that works for us, she's a widow, and one of the kids that we, her daughter, who we help, was killed in a car accident. and. Mm -hmm. which is very tragic, right, day after Christmas. Um, she came to work for us and it was, it was just the, a wonderful um, place for her to be. She had us as, you know, we were now her family. Mm -hmm. And then just last month, another one of our kids was killed in a crash, car crash. So we were able to just immediately connect them. And, you know, we try to do that. We try to find um, 
not just negative, you know, sad things, but there are wonderful positive things where you can be an inspiration to say, here's someone who's done what you're dreaming mm -hmm. about doing, let us connect you. Um, and the families love it. You know, I think you become, when you're a family of a fallen um, service member, you, it's it's hard to find uh, it's hard to find other people who understand what you've been through, mm. and if we can connect them and, ha and offer that service as well to the families, it's you know I, yeah. I I love that I love for them to just have someone to grip onto and say if yeah. you've done it I can get through this. Mm -hmm. so. So I can't think of any uh, better way to wrap up uh, the show, but mm -hmm. Colleen, seeing how this is this is really the first time you and Cynthia have met was yes. today. <laughs> is there any way or anything you'd like to say to Cynthia, saying you know for for founding this organization? Um, I can't think of a better way to end it than actually mm -hmm. ending it that way. So because you're not only <laughs> you're not the only person who has this experience, so you're also speaking for a lot of people right now too. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I really didn't, I wasn't sure if people still cared. Mm -hmm. You know, it was our life, it was our life story that we were living to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And there are always challenges with just having one parent. And when I had found your organization, I just, um, the fact that you guys have put so much time and effort and heart into taking care of families like ours just mm. means a lot and um, I love now being I guess next month I'll be the poster child <laughs> in the half marathon because right. my daughter and I'll be wearing these with red white and blue tutus and oh, <laughs> so we'll be trying Excellent. to get the word out about the uh, 500 for the fall and the falling uh, falling thank month. you but, um, yeah my my daughter you know, she she couldn't have gone to an out-of-state college like she did um, without help. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, and it's great that I finally got to meet you. Oh mm -hmm. well, and I just want to say, you know, you guys are our inspiration, and it's the least we can do. And um, we are just blessed to be able to be a part of your futures, and to you know let you guys know we haven't forgotten thank everything you. you've been through, and we you know don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So that's our show. Thank you so much, Will Sanchez, for allowing me to host your 101st episode. And I wish you all the health and happiness for another 100 episodes and beyond. And uh, for anyone who would like more information, you can check out fallenpatriots.org, or you can come run a few miles with us next month as we run the 500 for the fallen. So again, thank you so much, and gotta run. <laughs>